Welcome back to episode number two in the three stocks under series where we take a look at different stocks that trade at certain price ranges per share. Episode one was uh, three stocks under $50. So we looked at a few stocks that traded in the range of 40 to $50 per share. And today we're doing episode two and it's uh, three stocks under $40. Excuse that noise. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it. it was just a Bluetooth speaker. But uh, today we're doing three stocks under $40. So it's going to be uh, stocks trading in the range of $30 to $40. Now, I don't want to waste anybody's time explaining why we do this series. I already did that in uh, episode one in the intro. So if you want to know why we're doing the series, why we're looking at price ranges uh, per share instead of like market cap, uh, just go check out that episode, that intro. I explained everything there. Uh, but just know that I am planning on doing a whole separate series on stocks that trade at certain ranges in terms of their market cap so everybody's gonna get what they want eventually just got to be a little patient and if you want to see all the episodes of this series in one place you can check out the three stocks under uh, playlist which you can find up here down in the description or at the end of this video on a clickable card but with all of that out of the way let's go ahead and get started What's up everybody, my name is Ala and welcome to my world of stocks. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy the series, it really helps the channel survive and grow. Uh, but let's start with stock number three and this is going to be a gaming stock that I personally own. Uh, but it's been hammered pretty badly lately, but this may open up some opportunity for any uh, long term minded investors. And this stock is Activision Blizzard, ticker symbol ATVI. Now technically this stock is a little bit above $40 per share. so I'm kind of cheating with this one, but I wanted to include it anyway because management has been doing such a horrible job with this uh, company lately that I really feel like it's probably going to dip below $40 a share, which is where I would like to buy the stock. And it was actually trading at $39 per share just about a month ago. But in any case, the stock is still technically up over 30% in the past three years and up over 110% in the past five years. But thanks to those horrible decisions from management that we'll talk about in a second, the stock is now down over 10% year to date, down over 44% in the past six months and down over 50% from their 52 week high to now trading for just around $41 a share at the time of this recording. On the bright side, their valuation is much cheaper now. I remember that they used to have a trailing PE of, of around 150 about a year ago, which is extremely high, but now it's down to just 18 with an even better forward ratio of just around 16. Although to be fair, some of their other metrics are still a bit high. Regardless, the stock has crashed significantly, with some of that being due to gamers rejecting the use of overpriced loot boxes and microtransactions in video games, which are basically just extra ways of nickel and diming customers who purchase a game but then need to buy additional things within the game at a smaller price, hence the name microtransaction, and that's leading to a lot of negative PR for these video game companies. Speaking of which, the PR got even worse when Blizzard announced a mobile game called Diablo Eternal at a PC event at a time when many gamers are getting sick of mobile games being shoved down their throats because of their money making potential. And when the audience started to turn on the presenters for Diablo Eternal being a mobile game rather than a PC or even console game, the presenters just responded by mocking the audience, implying that everyone should have smartphones and therefore should not be complaining. This of course led to a PR nightmare and coupled with some earnings that didn't meet expectations, the stock has been getting destroyed ever since. But speaking of earnings, they actually don't look that bad. In their last quarter, sales increased by over 16% year over year to a record high of $2.38 billion, even beating their own guidance. And for the year, sales increased by about 7% year over year. EPS was also strong with Gap EPS increasing to $0.84 cents for the quarter, which was actually negative the year prior, and also increased by over 550% for the fiscal year, although much of that was due to tax reform. Still non-GAAP EPS grew by a massive 84% in the quarter year over year and increased by 23% for the fiscal year. So Activision has still performed as a pretty decent growth stock thus far, 
However, the issue is that 2019 will likely be a very rough year for them as management is guiding for sales to actually decrease by almost 20% in the year. That's a pretty big deal. So why the horrible outlook? Well, user growth has been slowing down lately. In fact, it's down around 7.5% year over year. And many analysts are pointing to the popular battle royale game called Fortnite as a big reason for that as that game was reported to have over 200 million users in November of last year. So the theory is that gamers are spending more time on a game like Fortnite and less time on games from Activision, Blizzard, and King Digital, which are all part of the Activision Blizzard company. However, the fear of Activision having a horrendous year is currently being baked into the stock price, and this may leave some potential upside for any long-term minded investors. Keep in mind that Activision has a battle royale game of their own in Black Ops 4, which is their newest iteration in the popular Call of Duty series, which was the number one best-selling console franchise in the world in nine of the last 10 years including last year. It also sold more units this year versus last year with three times the number of PC sales and over 40% of the console sales were digital which helps improve their margins as well. I don't really like that myself as a gamer. I like hard copy games but I can't deny the fact that digital games does help improve the margins of some of these uh, video game companies. Not to mention that the video game market is still projected to grow by billions of dollars in the coming years with most of that growth coming from mobile games at a compound annual growth rate of over 26%. Don't forget that Activision owns King Digital which makes some of the most popular uh, mobile games in the world. In fact, they make two of the top 10 highest grossing mobile titles in the US for the past 21 straight quarters in a row, with Candy Crush Saga still at number one, despite launching way back in 2012, and it still saw net bookings and monthly active user growth both quarter over quarter and year over year. And don't forget that the mobile game announced at the PC event by Blizzard that caused all of this horrible PR in the first place is in fact a mobile game itself. So while PC and console gamers are mad at the moment, that game should still bring some strong revenues for the company in the future. Not to mention that they also own a number of other popular games like Warcraft, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, Starcraft, and Overwatch, with some of them being a big play on the esports market that is projected to be worth over a billion dollars this year. Having said all of that, I want to re-emphasize that 2019 will be a rough transition year, as Activision pointed out in their conference call, pointing to higher costs and less game releases in an effort to spur future growth. The image that you're currently looking at right now is their outline plan from their investor relations page, and you can pause the video and read through all of this if you need to, but the gist of it is that they will be investing more heavily on well-performing games by hiring more game developers and cutting back on admin expenses and underperforming initiatives. This will probably result in less game releases overall that will hurt their revenues in the short term, but will ideally lead to better, more popular games being released in the future. So again, and I'm actually expecting this stock to possibly go a little lower this year, just my opinion, but I also think that these growth initiatives will produce some better results for them in the long term, so I'm not adding to my position right now, but I probably will if they start dipping under $40 a share once again. And don't forget that Activision remains a pretty good dividend growth stock for the future, as their yield is now starting to approach 1%, with a tiny payout ratio of just 15%, a double digit growth rate in the past 5 years, and 8 straight years of growth ever since they started paying it. Okay guys, Sorry for taking so long on Activision, there was a lot to talk about there, but let's go ahead and transition now to stock number two, and this is also a gaming stock, and this is Nintendo, and uh, this one's also similar to Activision in the sense that I also own a position in Nintendo, actually used to be, well, it used to be my number one biggest stock, uh, I think up until sometime last year. But I put out a video last year saying that I had some concerns about their near-term kind of future. And so I was cashing in profits in the kind of $50 and $40 range. And I explained all the reasons why and everything that was going on in that video. And again, that video was uh, a video that I put out last year. But in general, I did most of my buying at under $30 and most of my selling at above $30, although there was definitely some crossing over on occasion. But either way, the stock is still up over 125% in the past five years and up over 90% in the past three years, but are now down over 37% in the past year and down about 40% from their 52 week high to now trading for around $34 a share. 
Now the crash was definitely fueled by the market performing horribly overall towards the end of 2018 along with Japan dropping as well and the thing I don't like about Nintendo is that their performance is heavily tied to the Japanese market. But as I detailed in that previous video where I laid out all of my concerns, a lot of the crash can also be tied to the stock climbing by such a large amount in a short amount of time and because of the many concerns regarding their newest gaming console called the Nintendo Switch not being powerful enough to attract enough third party games from publishers. Not to mention that video game stocks rely heavily on hype and attention, but Nintendo was going through a bit of a dry spell in 2018 where they only really had two major game releases in Pokemon Let's Go and Smash Brothers Ultimate, both of which released at the end of the year in November and December respectively, at a time when the stock was already struggling and the market overall was in horrible conditions. However, I think the drop has been a bit overdone at this point, and if the stock were to keep dropping to below 30, I would definitely start buying the stock heavily again as I have done in the past, and here's my three reasons why. Reason number one is that their earnings have actually been pretty strong. In their last nine months, year over year, their sales increased by 16%, operating profit increased by 40%, ordinary profit increased by 23%, and profit to owners and profit per share in, uh, increased by about 25% each as well. So that's pretty solid growth. And if we look at the all important unit sales, they sold about 14.5 million Switch units, which was an increase of almost 20% year over year. Although they have lowered their prediction for the year from 20 million to 17 million instead, but I think that they will probably do a little bit better than that. Regardless, software sales also saw amazing performance, selling almost 95 million units for a year over year increase of over 100%. That also brings their total of first party games selling over a million units for the period to a massive 14 different games with Pokemon selling over 10 million in less than two months and Smash Brothers selling over 12 million in less than one month. Those are insanely high numbers for such a short amount of time. And that brings me to reason number two, which is Pokemon. People were worried about Pokemon Let's Go selling poorly because it was a little bit of a deviation from the traditional series, but this set Nintendo up perfectly to release one Pokemon game every year, switching back and forth from the Let's Go series to the mainline series. And while that is still speculative, on my part, it's already proving to be true as they just showed off their newest entry in the mainline series as Pokemon Sword and Shield launching later this year in 2019. Don't forget that Pokemon is the highest grossing entertainment media franchise of all time with over 90 billion dollars in estimated revenue which is even higher than Star Wars, that's pretty crazy. And it's also the highest grossing video game franchise of all time with Mario at number 2 which is also a Nintendo IP. Also, just a side note, Call of Duty comes in at number three, and that of course is owned by Activision, as we mentioned earlier. And we also talked about how important mobile games are, and Pokemon Go, which is a mobile game itself, uh, not to be confused with Pokemon Let's Go, that's different, but it still commands over 5 million daily active users and brings in around $190,000 in daily revenue despite launching a few years ago. Not to mention that we're even getting a Pokemon movie in a couple months featuring Ryan Reynolds. It's called uh, Detective Pikachu. You've probably seen commercials for it. The commercials are pretty funny and it's looking like it's probably going to be a really good and well-received movie. To be clear, Nintendo only owns about a third of Pokemon, but all of the success is still important nonetheless, as Pokemon console games are exclusive to Nintendo. And finally, reason number three is that there are now heavy rumors about one or possibly even two new Switch consoles coming in the near future, either being smaller to cater more to the mobile crowd or being much more powerful to attract third party developers, which by the way, we're already starting to see third parties take notice of the Switch's success as is evident in Mortal Kombat 11 launching on the Switch later this year. There's also rumors of Microsoft bringing over their Game Pass service to the Switch, which would bring even more games to the platform. So all in all, I think Nintendo does definitely have a lot of long-term potential, and if I can get that share price at under $30 like I have in the past, then I really wouldn't mind picking up more shares. That's really where I feel the most comfortable, and even if it continues to dip below that, um, you know, I'm still not really worried about picking up more shares that my average cost basis would still be pretty low uh, relatively speaking So that's really where I feel the most comfortable right now 
I, I do just kind of have a little bit of a pause because there are concerns about, you know, it's still kind of rumors that a new Switch console is gonna, going to come out and we don't necessarily know how the next Pokemon game will be received. Also, their Metroid Prime game got uh, pretty much canceled. Well, it got delayed for a few years, but it essentially canceled at least in the short term. So there are still some concerns with Nintendo, but again, under 30, I, I, I would be okay with picking up more shares and adding to my long-term position for the future. All right, guys, moving on to stock number three. We've got a stock that I've been talking about a lot on the channel recently, so I apologize for all the repetitiveness, but I had to include it because it fits perfectly in today's episode as it does trade for around 30 or $31 per share. I've done most of my buying at under 30. I've actually been buying it very heavily at under 30, but this is a stock that I'm very bullish on at the moment, and it is AT&T, ticker symbol T. Now, as you guys know, there are three primary reasons why I've been purchasing the stock so heavily lately, and those are reason number one, their low valuation, reason number two is their really high dividend, and then reason number three is uh, their upcoming services in 5G and their upcoming video streaming service as well. But starting with the first, we can see that the stock is actually down in the past five years by around 3%, which is really horrible performance when you think about it. This is at a time when many stocks have performed extremely well, but it's currently down over 18% in the past three years and from their high of around $43, they are now down to trading for around $30, which is a drop of around 30%, and that's very significant. Now, much of this was because of the legacy parts of their business performing very poorly in cable television and landline telecom, both of which consumers are heavily transitioning away from in favor of streaming services like Netflix and wireless smartphone plans, either by contract or more of what we've been seeing lately is growth in prepaid plans. But luckily, AT&T also offers both of those through AT&T and prepaid services like Cricket, which is what I actually use myself. Anyway, the damage being done by the legacy side of their business at one point led to seven straight quarters of negative revenue growth for AT&T and really damaged the stock. Fortunately for me though, this made their valuation very attractive with a trailing PE of just 10.8, forward of just 8.4, and even their PEG, PS, and PB ratios are all pretty decent as well, at least compared to the competition. And this leads us to reason number two, which is their huge dividend. Thanks to the lower share price, their yield is a massive 6.6%. .6%. Not to mention that my cost basis is still under $30, and my yield is currently above 7%, which I'm very happy about. Even if the stock stayed flat, I'd still be making at least 7% on all of my money invested. But moving on to the other metrics, they have a payout ratio that is a little high at 57%, but again, the yield is already very high, so I don't really need them to increase that dividend by very much. And although some people are worried about them cutting the dividend in the future, I'm a bit more optimistic given that they've actually increased their dividends for 34 straight years. So I really think that it will need to be a last resort or worst case scenario to get them to cut that dividend. Also, ignore that five year growth rate. I think it's actually around 3%, but Seeking Alpha glitched out on that for some reason. Anyway, that leaves us now with reason number three. And keeping things short, I'll just say that I expect AT&T to benefit heavily from their investments in 5G technologies that many predict will usher in the next wave of megatrend markets like autonomous driving, connected car features, and the internet of things. Not to mention that it may bring the next smartphone super cycle that the market could really use right now as smartphone sales continue to weaken. And while the cord cutting movement continues to lose subscribers for AT&T, which by the way was over 650,000 in their last quarter, which is very high, uh, their latest acquisition of Time Warner is in my opinion exactly what they needed to transition away from traditional cable TV to over the top streaming services, which they also noted as the reason for many of their losses. This gives them ownership of HBO, TNT, CNN, TBS, Warner Brothers Pictures, New Line Cinema, the DC Universe, and the list goes on. All of which will be helping fuel their new streaming service that should launch later this year to compete with the likes of Netflix, Amazon, and even Disney. Not to mention that the acquisition is already helping as revenues jumped by 15% in the quarter to 48 billion, adjusted EPS jumped 10%, and they're also producing huge cash flow to help them pay down debt, with cash from operations jumping 27% to over 12 billion, and free cash flow jumping 78% to almost $8 billion. 
dollars. Not to mention that their dividend payout ratio for the quarter was just 46%, which makes me feel even better about the health of their dividend going forward. In any case, that huge dividend coupled with the low valuation and their future growth catalysts in 5G and over-the-top video streaming makes this stock a very attractive one to me for the long term. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on this. An honorable mention might be Kraft Heinz. <laughs> I didn't include that one, but that one certainly dropped a huge amount and it trades within this range uh, that would have... Uh, could have definitely been included for today's episode. But anyway, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy the series. And don't forget to check out the playlist if you want to see other episodes. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.